Hi, in this screencast I want to talk about yeah, yeah, creating games with Droidar and some general hints. Um, we, you should already know that how the, the basic components of Droidar work, what, what for example a world is, and um, I need to explain how this is updated mechanism works. So every 20 milliseconds um, any object like the world um, will get this update call and the world contains for example three objects and will pass this update call down to the objects. So if you're creating custom game components which need to check frequently if something is uh, has changed then um, yeah you just um, implement this updatable component uh, interface and add it to the system updater it's called. Um, I can show it in an example setup. Um, let's go in here and for example the debug setup. It's a normal setup so um, the method is called um, add elements to update thread and here this is a system updater and there you add for example the world but you could also add any other updatable. Any element um, you add to the world uh, will be automatically called um, by the world update mechanism so you don't have to add an, uh, all the objects uh, by hand here just um, add them to the world and the world will push these, this update uh, um, call down to its uh, contain uh, to its objects it contains. Um, yeah, um, this update function it has a time delta, and I think it's it's important to understand how this works. So I um, I yeah just Google for example for something like this, and then you get to re really good uh, resources like. Um, yeah, how the time delta works and uh, what to do with it and also some um, information about yeah, integration that's basically some um, yeah, physics movement. Um, I think it's important to understand how this works before you can start to create real game components. So um, yeah, just read it and um, it's it's not that complicated. Just make sure that uh, no matter um, how how slow or how fast your device is, it will always behaves in the same way because it's your yeah, um, CPU independent. You could say it like this. Okay, I pause you for a second because I want to add another example in the components package. There are some example components like the proximity sensor, which reacts. Um, you can add the proximity sensor to an object and when the user and uh, by this uh, virtual camera gets close to the object where this uh, sensor is attached to then this sensor is um, yeah, uh, executed and it does this by um, it will automatically be called by the um, the, the update uh, method will be called by the object uh, where it is contained in, so um, it never stores the um, the obj uh, its parent object directly. It um, gets it when the update method is called, and it gets its parent, and it checks when it's an object. Then I can get the object position and check if it's close to the camera position, and if it is so, then this um, yeah abstract method will be called and you uh, the user the developer can react in some way um and this way um yeah there's some additional stuff like a timer which uh, makes sure that um yeah this part is not executed every 20 milliseconds but for example every one second i don't know default update time yeah it's one second and um so because some things uh, don't have to be checked so frequently uh, like this um, if, it, if the user is close to the object or not and um, this concept of um, yeah, passing the, the parent 
uh, via the update method is um, very useful because now you can uh, take the um, proximity sensor and uh, yeah, stick it to um, different uh, objects um, by just uh, yeah, removing it from the last object and sticking it to a new one and you don't have to um, change any fields in here um, because yeah, it's never stored uh, in fields uh, which uh, object is currently the parent. Um, okay, another useful um, package is the um, the game uh, I think uh, game logic package. Um, first, we will um, you should check here the the game logic tests I created because. Um, this way you can easily get some impression how to use uh, this uh, game logic package. Um, I divided it into things like game participants, um, attributes. Um, it's basically that um, okay. You you create a participant, give it a name, for example. Um, you um, take the stat list and add some um, uh, stats and um, for example um, this is how the, the, the game participant looks um, you can always it's in the game logic package you can um, I created some UML diagrams um, it's in concepts in here but this test should uh, give you a, a first impression how to use it um, it like you you add some stats like um, they are they are all dynamic, so you always give them the direct name, and this way, um, yeah, you can create very flexible, um, yeah, uh, game uh, concepts. If you don't uh, want to use it, of course you can create your own game logic uh, stuff. But um, I used it for another project a year ago, and it uh, yeah helped a lot because it's very easy to add things like um, yeah, for example. I created uh, some boosters like um, here it's a maximum health uh, plus 15 and it's I think it's really simple um, it does nothing uh, special it just adds for example a value it's like um, I think it's a decorator pattern I used here um, and you can then create very um, dynamic um, stats. You can create um, actions which are executable. For example, this actions for fireball. Then, when it's executed, it uh, takes a, yeah, it the target and the initiator, and uh, just removes some. It checks if there are all the stats which are needed to be executed, and then it reduces the health of the target by the defined value and this way you can create any type of game action um, for example healing or anything else um, yeah read this test and um, maybe you can use it for your own stuff um, as I said it helped me a lot and um, yeah if you want of course you can improve it and uh, notify and um, the last thing I want to explain as the um, render quad list it's used in the um, in one example setup in the uh, large worlds setup and it can be used um, to very easily um, add a lot of objects to world and only animate always the objects which are close to the um, to the user or in this um, the user is always represented by by the camera because the camera moves around the virtual world and the user moves around in the real world so the camera has to be passed um, and the um, the quad list will always um, it has a distance so objects in the distance of 100 meters to the users will be animated and rendered and everything beyond this uh, won't be um, yeah animated and rendered and it will be recalculated every um, 10 meters uh, the objects which are currently animated and rendered um, yeah the, the um, concept of a quad tree you can yeah, see it right here and um, 
it helps you to create um, really big worlds um, without re uh, yeah, losing any uh, sort of performance. If you add 10,000 objects to a world normally this would be too much. Um, if you would update them in a, in a default render um, normal container, so if you would add these uh, 10,000 objects directly to a normal world then it would be too much. But if you put them in a render quad list and add this list to the world, then um, only you know, the close objects to the user will be updated. For example, if you have you know, 10,000 moving uh, enemies or something like this, um, it's only important what the enemies close to the user do and not the enemies which are uh, one kilometer away or something like this. So, um, yeah, this component uh, might also help you to um, make complex um, yeah, large worlds without losing any sort of performance. Um, yeah, I think that were the most important uh, yeah, components. Um, if I have any additions, maybe I will just write it in the detail or create another video. Um, thanks for watching and bye.